I'm going to give a tip of the week and a plugin of the week at the same time because I need to use the plugin to do the tip. And I did show this uh, in a video I did on these three new plugins. There's three very cool new plugins, uh, a reverb, a delay, and uh, a filter that works-ish. There's a few issues with the filter. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but this plugin is super cool and it works well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, I'll use the guitar, in fact, to, to, to demo this because I, I like this guitar tone that I got here. This is uh, just your, your regular um, brownstone guitar amp sim here in GarageBand, but um, in this track it sounds like this. So pretty cool, yeah. We'll turn it up a little bit so we can hear it. Uh, so the, the tip that I'm going to show you here is how to create your own effects track so that we're just controlling the effects on this one. Now, here's what we do. You've got your original track there. We need to duplicate it. So we're going to tap it. We're going to duplicate to get a second track here. Now, you could use the exact same method here on GarageBand Mac, by the way. Same thing, duplicate your track. What we then want to do is actually copy the audio because GarageBand only duplicates your track and all your track settings. So you'll notice here, it's got all the same settings here that we have on that one as that one. So we're, we're set up here. What we need to do is copy all this audio. So we'll just tap out here, drag our box, tap on, tap on, and then hit the copy button. Now we need to bring our playhead to the right position, which it is, go to the right track, tap and tap paste and boom, there is all of our audio. We've got two copies of our audio. So you're thinking, so what, Pete? We've got two copies of our audio. Fan bloody tastic. But here's the thing. If we use a plugin that has a wet, dry knob <laughs> or dial, then we could actually make this our guitar track and this one just our effects track for this guitar. I'll show you what I mean. So what we'll do, we'll jump in here to plugins and EQ. We'll leave the noise gate and the visual EQ on there, but we're going to hit edit and we're going to use this empty plugin slot here. We're going to grab audio unit extensions and we're going to scroll on down until we get to the VB01. This is this new free reverb plugin, which is very, very cool. So we put that one on there. We then jump into the plugin. Now, what I could do, say, say I just was using this track, just as the guitar track. What I could do is dial in this wet and dry. So I could say, all right, so I want, say I want 80% dry coming through and 20% wet. So it's going to give me 20% of this uh, reverb signal. And if we play the guitar now. Pretty cool, yeah. You know, it's got that nice sort of holy reverb kind of sound there, and you can dial in your reverb there as best you like. But here's the thing. If what we wanted to do instead is control just the reverb, and we've got both of these tracks, what we can do is on this second track, we leave the first track alone, the second track we grab the reverb, we dial the wet around, we remove all of the dry. So now this is just the reverb sound. This is what it sounds like if we solo that. And this is just again, just this reverb sound sounds like this. <laughs> Now you probably want to dial down that wet because now that you've dialed it in there, that's just what you're hearing with reverb. So if we made this like 30%. So you can hear that that's just the reverb that's being added to this. And if we, uh, if we increase this and make it nice and wide. So there you go. Now what we can do is we can bring this back with this one, drop this down to zero, and then we can actually dial into taste. So we come back to our guitar, you'll hear just the original guitar, and as we dial this up, it's controlling just that reverb, because again, 100% wet means that it's not giving you any of that original dry guitar signal, it's just giving you the reverb. Let's try it now. And why this is cool is, you're probably ahead of me on this, but you can't automate effects in GarageBand, right? 
Well, yeah, you kind of can. Because now that this is just an effects track, what we could do, say we wanted that uh, that effect only to be there for the intro, we can actually automate this in. So we can say, right, so we only want this effect here on the intro. So we're going to come in here. We're going to tap some automation points. We're going to go boom. And then uh, where's my intro end? I think it ends there. So we go boom and boom. And then we turn that off. And then we bring that down. And then take a listen to this. What we can actually do is if we play across this part, it's actually going to have the reverb on and then it's going to turn the reverb off as we go into the next section. Let's take a listen. So you can have that nice big whole reverb on your intro of your guitar. As soon as you get to the verse where you're start starting to sing along, you can turn it off and that can work well. If we bring it back in with the rest of our track, we've got our big epic guitar intro like this. And then you can turn it off so you keep some space for your vocals and your other instruments to come on in there. So there you go. That's a twofer. That's our tip of the week and our plug-in of the week. Tip of the week is using a second track as a reverb track so that you can uh, control your reverb with uh, automation and completely separately from your original track. And of course, we did it by checking out the cool new VB01 plugin, which is a very nice free reverb plugin for your GarageBand iOS. And again, you can use the same method on your Mac to do the same kind of thing. Hope you found that useful.